The AI gods have looked down on us once again and opened Pandora's box, and we got something completely incredible, if not a little bit mundane. So this model is called Eagle 7B, and on the surface, it's pretty boring. It uses this RWKV V5 architecture, it's open source, it's beating Mistral 7B, which is pretty cool, and it also supports over 100 languages in its sort of general training. So it's not meant to be good at any one thing, it's just good to have a very wide capability in terms of languages and translating between them. And the big thing here is twofold, and you may not have heard of this before. So the biggest advantage here is this model does not use transformers. There are a lot of technical things to unpack here and sort of a little bit of AI history to go into. And I can't wait to break this model down, explain a bit of this history, and we'll do a demo in the end so you guys can see that this is actually currently deployed. So that is to say this model has huge implications for new ideas about how to build these models, their capabilities, and what they will look like in the future. So welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So what is Eagle 7B and why is it such a big deal? And how is it different than other 7 billion parameter models? So basically this is the blog post from RWKV. They're a LLM development company that's roughly associated with the Linux Foundation. So they do open source stuff and their key focus is work on recurrent neural networks. And this is actually kind of a older technology that was really prevalent back in 2018 with the first burst of GPUs that made this kind of compute possible. However, the um, actual data structure and the theory behind RNNs was actually invented in the 80s, actually in 1986. So it's kind of cool to see this technology take a bit of a leap forward, but I'll get into in just a bit why RNNs are such a big deal to be doing this kind of work with. So how does RWKV explain this? So it's built on their V5 architecture, which right now they describe as a linear transformer with 10 to 100 times lower inference cost. And it's also a little bit faster. They mention it's one of the greenest LLMs in terms of the amount of energy used to train it. This also comes into how they trained it, which is different than other transformer-based models. They trained it on 1.1 trillion tokens across 100 languages, and they mention this a lot. So they're really proud of the fact that this can actually work with 100 languages and do multilingual kind of translation and that kind of thing. Right now, it outperforms every other 7 billion class model in multilingual benchmarks. It approaches Falcon 1.5 trillion, Llama 2 trillion, and Mistral in certain cases, as long as uh, you pick your numbers right. And the biggest advancement here is that this is what they call an attention-free transformer, which is a derivation of a recurrent neural network and some tooling that was actually used prior. But the approach here is novel. So this is actually still different than the implementations we would have seen kind of in the 2018, 2019 timeframe. And what's really cool is this is a foundation model with a very small instruct tune. Um, so further fine tuning is necessary to get it really good at, at specific things, but right now it's been left in kind of its general state. It's licensed with Apache 2, which is really quite open. Uh, some would argue it's the most open and you can use it on a hugging face right now. So why is this model a big deal and why should you care? So we're gonna get into a little bit of computer science speak, but the biggest advancement here by far is that uh, RWKV, basically an RNN, just outperformed the top transformers train on the same amount of data. So the amount of data in is an important factor here. And why should you care? So right now, um, as all of you know, transformers are great. It's what gave us massive improvements in speed and capability with all of the open source models we've seen from the last year. So the, the LLM revolution was built on transformers, but the issue is they're memory heavy and slow and as a result, pretty expensive. So that's why they're mentioning also here that this is the greenest because right now training even on H100s or the, or the most efficient GPUs per compute cycles is expensive. So what do you get with RNNs or recurrent neural networks? Basically, you get faster inference, you need much less RAM to train them and use for inference, and you have infinite context length. As a result of all that, these are also faster to train. Right now, RNNs were behind in terms of performance, but this model might show kind of a sea change in this being the current state of things. So what actually is the difference between RNNs and transformers? And can we really call RWKV a RNN? So basically, when we're looking at GPUs or using compute to train a recurrent neural network or a transformer-based LLM, the differences happen in terms of how the data is being loaded into GPUs. So the issue with RNNs is 
they're very capable and they're especially capable at NLP tasks, which is what machine learning got really good at in 2018, kind of out of nowhere. And there's a reason for that. However, RNNs are not super efficient in terms of computation, at least because they process input sequences one step at a time and they can't fully use parallel computing. The thing is, is you're also limited by the amount of RAM on a single instance. So this is why NVLink was a really big deal back in the day as well, because it let you create kind of one unified GPU that you then had to use to train. And the beauty of transformers is that you can actually parallelize and have a bunch of different parts of a task on different GPUs. Now the difference is, although you can parallelize, it does require a kind of exponential curve of computation. But with a few tricks, you can kind of beat that and Fortunately, at this point, we can actually build hardware that also attacks some of those problems. But the question is, can you really consider RWKV as an RNN? And some would say that it's something even more exotic called a TCN or a temporal convolutional network. And I also kind of share this idea. So basically the idea here is it's working somewhere in the middle where you get some of the advantages of a transformer-based network with an RNN doing a lot of the heavy lifting under the table. And I think it's also cool to mention that the attention in these quote-unquote linear transformers is more of a vector-based dot product instead of inner product based. And that's kind of a math term, but basically this means it might not work as well when you need lots of one-to-many relationships and when you're doing certain things in memory. So GPU memory is memory, but when you use it to do different things, it happens to be good at different things. So what's cool is I see this RWKV update more as a really curious use of leveraging what RNNs were good at with NLP, then applying a lot of language-based tokens around it, and then ending up with an LLM in a really familiar format that we've seen in the last year, um, also happen to be really good at doing language stuff. So I think it's cool to see kind of this hybrid TCN architecture that RWKV is calling V5. And I just think it's really, really cool. So for the first time, an RNN surpassed all transformers of the same size that were trained on the same amount of data. So that means we have 1 trillion parameters roughly going in, and the resulting model is roughly 7 billion parameters. And what's really cool that we haven't quite seen yet is this is a very strong indicator that training this model longer will make it state-of-the-art for its size. So in other words, something that has novel potential we have not seen before in a model of this size. This does come with some caveats though. So yes, if everything goes right, we could train a 70 billion parameter RWKV and you'll, you would be able to run it on you know, a toaster with infinite context length. However, there is still an important open question, even if the model would have been trained longer, which is, is RWKV also as scalable as transformers? And that's a really open question because for them to even get this far, there was a lot of work that had to happen to even make that possible. For now, I don't really think so, but we're gonna have to kind of wait and see what happens. So for those of you who don't know, um, Blink DL AI is a guy on Twitter and he is one of the biggest contributors to the RWKV project. So definitely go follow him. A lot of the information in this video is coming from there. And he's really been working against the entire industry for years. If anyone deserves a win like this, it is RWKV and the project behind it. So again, the two key facts here, uh, it was trained on 1 trillion tokens, meaning it's not the best for its size, but it probably will be if it's trained longer. And this is why we all use transformers. This is language modeling. It seems faster, it seems more responsive, and it seems to have intuition with what you're prompting with. And the other thing is that supposedly around 15% of those 1 trillion tokens is actually not English. So what's really interesting is it's actually able to span 100 plus languages with only 15% of the information being non-English, which is quite cool. If you wanna understand how this is kind of implemented, um, reading the Falcon paper is something I highly recommend. And I do wanna show you guys some benchmarks that do a better job of really explaining how good this model is. So the key here is we're looking at mostly performance in multilingual benchmarks. So this is mostly prose and reasoning and kind of basic uh, subject question kinds of benchmarks. And as you can see here, uh, the two RWKV models, both version four and five, vastly outperform Mistral 7B, Llama 2 7B, and Falcon 7B by quite a margin as well. In this case, almost uh, four to five points in every category. That's really, really impressive. I think a lot of these language models are less covered because it's hard to, to see what they do, right? I think in a lot of ways, people now, even people who aren't computer scientists, see the issue of 
translation by machine already kind of a, a known quantity and solved since Google Translate has been out for you know more than a decade now and it's just not seen as exciting and it's, it's harder to showcase as you know, image models or otherwise LLMs. Its English performance is also quite good. Granted, it's not maybe as consistent, but the key here is there's still a large jump in uh, RWKV version four to version five. So the architecture is improving and they've also moved up in their previous benches, which previously put them below MPT7B and previously for a model of that size, that was the highest performance you could achieve. And the other thing here that's wild is there were many academics far smarter than me who for the longest time looked at RNN-based models and said that simply they would never trade blows with transformer-based models. And right now, these benchmarks right here are doing that in real time. And pretty much here, they say that they're gonna keep trying to narrow this gap and keep improving for version six. And this is the biggest one here. So right now, this is showing the amount of time needed to train relative to the number of tokens. And this is why advancements in RNNs are such a big deal, because with transformers, you basically need a exponential amount of compute given the increase of tokens. And as you can see with an RWKV model, it's a straight line, which means it is linear scaling, which is incredibly cool. And then they talk about the fact that they want to build inclusive AI because more of the world speaks other languages than English, which is kind of interesting. And their future plans are also quite interesting. So it says here why it not may have succeeded in passing Llama 2 and Mistral in all benchmarks. The V5 architecture scales similarly to Transformers with a similar token count. They can achieve Llama 2-like levels of performance and support all this in different languages. They also mentioned that they'll be releasing the paper in full very soon. So basically they need some GPUs and a little bit of scaling with some other computers and they're gonna see how big they can make this thing actually, you know, come together. And it'll also be really cool to start see people training these and fine tuning them to uh, really eke performance in very specific areas out of this model, which I can't wait to see. So let's try it out. So let me start with using their example prompt here. We're going to basically ask, here's a very detailed plan to create flying pigs with a system prompt of this LLM being my assistant. So we'll see here how quick this is. Now, what's interesting is in theory, this should be faster. This is running on an NVIDIA T4. And the advantage of these models is you have fewer restrictions on context length. And in theory, they're faster. So obviously we're running on Gradio on Hugging Face. So the thing here is it's probably gonna be, you know, we'll wait 20 seconds as opposed to a minute but let's see what this gives us. And here we go. So actually, wow, this is pretty quick. And you know what? This is actually pretty cohesive too. Sometimes between bullet points, it'll lose sense of kind of what it's doing. We'll see if we can get it to have uh, a multi-step response. We'll have to see here. So, okay, so genetic engineering, flight training, flying tests, public acceptance, education. Okay, so let me see here. Now, I wonder where I can make this actually output in Japanese. Okay, and then I will say, user, please provide this in Japanese. Let's see if this system prompt works. I'm also curious if any of you commonly use these, these LLMs in other languages. Obviously, I'm using them in English predominantly, but I wonder if some of you, I, I know like a lot of people who watch this are actually from Japan. So I think that would be quite interesting. And yeah, if there are any people from Spanish speaking countries or countries in Latin America, that would be quite interesting. Okay, so cool. So this is actually giving this all to us, I believe in the same format in Japanese. And there has been no difference in speed. This is something I can send to my friend who's Japanese so I can see if this pans out. I myself have been to Japan, but unfortunately I do not speak Chinese. So or I not, unfortunately I don't speak Japanese, so I can't exactly verify all of this and there it is and let me see here um so i'm just going to see if this will actually give us the same in spanish and there it is so i just wanted to make a quick video about this i i think the architectural implications are really massive here and it's cool that there are still people focused on seeing what we can squeeze out of what are sort of considered older more historical approaches to neural networks now being improved to the point that they can run as full LLMs in a format we're all pretty familiar with. And the really cool thing here is 
Sometimes older technologies can actually offer very interesting performance improvements and speed ups relative to what we think is the current state of the art. And this is one really awesome thing that's happening in open source in general. And again, I can't wait to see what this new open source model results in, in terms of people actually taking it and ripping it apart and seeing what they can really do with it. So I hope you guys learned something. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.